Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this is the Mark Booster series of Gate Environmental Science and Engineering and we are in the part 12 and you should be ready with your notes so that which questions we are discussing in this video we have to write down and note down the important points. So if you haven't checked the previous parts you can check the link in the description as well as given in the i button. So if you want to participate in the daily quiz you can join our telegram group that is learn for the environment for the participation you have to just attend the quiz every time the link will be provided in the description below so without wasting much time let's get started so here i have taken some of the questions from the previous year's question of gate environmental science and engineering we will not only know the correct option but we will know the important concept behind that so that we will be able to answer the questions when it is asked in the next examination so let us read the question first so here the first question for the today's video is if D is the depth of an aquifer through which water is flowing. So this is talking about an aquifer and then the relationship between permeability which is given as capital K and transmissibility which is also known as transmissivity. Both these things denote T that is transmissibility or transmissivity. So don't get confused. So it is asking what is the relationship between them. The D, K and T you have to tell me. So I'll wait for certain seconds then I'll reveal the correct option. So here the correct formula will be option number A. The correct relationship between T, K and D is T is equal to K multiplied by D. So this question can also come in the form of numerical. So you should note down this formula very very important. Capital T that is transmissibility or transmissivity is equal to K that is capital K which is permeability multiplied by the depth of an aquifer which is denoted as small d. So t is equal to kd. You should remember Kapil Dev. So Kapil Dev transformed our cricketing history in 1983. Let's move on to the next slide to know a bit more about this formula if you are given a different situation. So here there are two kinds of aquifer as you know if you don't I will tell you here. One is confined aquifer and other is unconfined aquifer. So what is the difference between them? So here aquifer that is having the water here it is confined or it is blocked by a confining bed so that the area is blocked from both the ends. But here in case of unconfined aquifer there is no confinement or there is no border on the top region as you can see here there is no confining bed but at the bottom part there is the confining bed. So as a result what will be the difference will be that the water table will be having different height or depth. So here depth is denoted as small b we have discussed as small d but here it is taken as small b. So in the case of confined aquifer the b1 or b2 any depth will be similar everywhere because it is very very confined or blocked. So here the formula anywhere will be T is equal to KB and everywhere the depth will be same. So formula will be T1 is equal to T2 every time transmissibility will be equal. But in case of unconfined aquifer as you can see here if there is the slope here here the height is different. So here the height is also different because here B1 is bit more than the B2 that is the depth B2 is less. So here T2 will be obviously less because we have to multiply the depth to find out the transmissibility. Here the B1 will be more so T1 transmissibility will be also more. So in this case T1 will be greater than T2. So you should remember if there is unconfined aquifer there will be difference in the transmissibility from one depth to another but in case of confined aquifer there will be similar transmissibility. So I hope it was clear it was only concept part let's move to the next question. So the next question is coming from the fluid statics here the question is asking in fluid statics the line of action of the buoyant force always acts through the what part of the submerged body or the floating body. So you have to read every options then I will reveal the correct option. So here the correct option will be option number C yes this concept you have to just note down no need to go in depth. Here it is telling that the line of action of the buoyant force always act through the centroid of the displaced volume of the fluid of the body. So it is in case of fluid statics. What is centroid? This is different than center. Don't get confused here it will be centroid. So if this is the body 
then all this three part this part will be the centroid part of that body so here it will be the line of action of the buoyancy force which is buoyant force always acts through the centroid of the displaced volume of fluid by the body so if any body is displacing the fluid from some place then it will act through the centroid part of that fluid part of that body so i hope it was clear let's move on to the next question the next question from the solid waste management very very important the question was what is the order of preference of various elements in the integrated waste management hierarchy and the question was asking highest preference to lowest preference so first of all what does that mean that means what should we prefer while segregating or eliminating our waste in the integrated waste management and what should be our least preference so here the correct option will be option number a yes first it will be three r's as you all know reduce reuse and recycle first we will try to reduce the waste and then we will try to reuse the product and recycle them if they are recyclable if all these three r's are not possible we will go for energy recovery from the waste and if at all after that also it is not possible nothing is left in the waste then we will finally go for land filling of the waste in the integrated waste management so reduce reuse and recycle energy recovery and finally land filling will be the preference hierarchy for the integrated waste management so let's move on to the next question so don't look into the picture first let us read the question and know the answer then we will know the concept here the question is asking which of the following causes type 1 settling in the sedimentation tank so here it is about the water treatment and options are agglomeration compression force of gravity or charge neutralization so which one is coming under the type 1 category of settling in a sedimentation tank so here the correct option will be option number c force of gravity or discrete settling is the type 1 in the settling in a sedimentation tank and you should know all the four types of the settling in a sedimentation tank very important so here in case of type 1 as we know discrete settling or force of gravity by the action of gravity all the particles will settle down and it removes heavier and discrete particles you should note down and in case of type 2 settling type it is called as flocculent settling so here what happens is interface develops if biological flock occurs here in case of flocculent settling third one is hindered or zone settling so here zone wise the particles will settle it is the type 3 kind of settling in the sedimentation tank and fourth one and the final one is the compression settling so it occurs in lower sludge mass so here it occurs in lower sludge mass that is the compression settling so here you should remember one short form that is dfhc dfhc is the short form for type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 in the settling of the sedimentation tank you should write down dfhc is the short form to remember discrete settling flocculent settling hindered settling and compression settling let's move to the next question so here comes our next question let us read that the question is which of the following is the terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain of aerobic respiration so this is from the microbial respiration the electron transport chain this concept is also important so options are on your screen water nadh oxygen or cytochrome c so here the correct option will be option number c oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor in the etc that is electron transport chain of aerobic respiration so there is a slight difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration not slight it is a major difference so we will know in the next slide so here comes our next slide where you have to note down first of all electron transport chain aerobic respiration final receptor is the terminal receptor which is called as oxygen is the final receptor in the aerobic respiration as we have discussed now we will know about anaerobic respiration so anaerobic means not aerobic so here oxygen is not involved means here the final electron acceptor can never be oxygen so it can be other products and we'll know what are they they can be sulfate reducer that reaction can be there which will be having the final electron acceptor or methane reducer mechanism or nitrate reducer mechanism 
These three are important and in case of sulfate reducer mechanism, it is also called as the sulfate reduction process in which the final electron acceptor is what? It is sodium sulfate that is Na2SO4 or if in the option it will be given SO4 2 minus only sulfate also, you have to hit the that option. Next coming to the second process that is it is telling about methane reducer that means methanogenesis. Yes, in the methanogenesis process, the microbes are having final electron acceptor as carbon dioxide. So here you can see in first case sulfate reducer SO4 2 minus was the final electron acceptor. Here in case of methanogenesis, carbon dioxide is the final electron acceptor. Next coming to the nitrate reducer, what is this mechanism? This is actually telling about the denitrification process. Yes, in nitrogen cycle, you all know denitrification is the very important process. In that process, the final electron acceptor, which is actually all these three are part of anaerobic respiration, is sodium nitrate, that is NaNO3, or in the option it will be given NO3 minus only. So that will be the correct option. So these three are important anaerobic respiration categories and their final electron acceptor which element is there so i hope you have noted down all these things let's move on to the next question so here this question is coming from the noise pollution decibel level let us read the question first don't get worried by looking into the formula so the question is asking in the context of noise pollution spl that is sound pressure level in the decibel so what will be the relationship between the spl and the root mean square sound pressure that is denoted as p that is small p and the reference or hearing threshold pressure which is denoted as p naught so what is the relationship between all this you have to tell because this formula is also important and you have to tell which formula is correct for the sound pressure level that is spl so here the correct option will be option number a to find the sound pressure level in the noise pollution area, the formula is 20 multiplied by log base 10 P by P naught. So P naught means the reference threshold will be in the denominator and the P that is the root mean square will be in the numerator. So that is the thing you should remember. Small P will be in the numerator, P naught will be in the denominator. So this is the formula you should note down because the question can also come to find out the value of SPL. So I hope you have noted down. Let's move on to the next question. So guys, this question is very, very simple. Yes, I'm telling very, very simple. If you know the concept, very easy question, you will get the full marks. So let us read the question first, then we'll come to the figure. The question is telling the following block diagram highlights the typical phases of the life cycle of a product. So here it is telling about life cycle assessment. Yes, very easy. You all know the four step. I'm not going to tell now. So the question is, in the figure, this is the figure given, P, Q, R represent various possible scopes of analysis in the life cycle assessment. So these English terms, you should not get confused, scope, analysis, just read what the question is asking. Question is asking which of the following statement is true and the statements are R represents cradle to grave analysis or P represents cradle to gate analysis. Similarly, the options are given. So here in this view, in this blockchain, you will notice that First thing is material extraction and then it goes on to the production, distribution, usage and finally the end of life of that product. So here the question, let us read the first statement. The first statement states R represents cradle to grave analysis. So if you know the concept, you all know that life cycle assessment is also called as cradle to grave analysis. So let's see whether this R represent that or not. Yes, as you can see the R is going from here to here. That means from material extraction to the end of life. So this is perfectly telling the cradle to grave analysis and cradle means what? You can see in this picture, the cradle means the where the place, the newborn sleeps, that is the initial stage is called as the cradle stage. So initial stage is material extraction, end of life is the final process, that is the grave part. So here option A is already the correct option. No need to read all these things because these are not the correct statements. And here you should also know the four steps in life cycle assessment. First is goal and scope. Second is life cycle inventory. Third is life cycle impact assessment. And fourth is 
life cycle interpretation so this interpretation part comes along all these three part at a time but here if you are telling four step then it will be in the fourth part that is the interpretation so i hope this question was i was able to make you understand very easily now let us move to the next question so here comes the next question and again the question is in the form of correct order select so here the question is telling choose the correct order of biodegradability and what is will be the order the order will be from highest to lowest so of the following municipal solid waste compound three things are given food waste newspaper and pvc that is polyvinyl chloride so here everyone will be able to answer this but here some of you will be confused between option a and option b because all will be knowing that lowest biodegradability will be of pvc that means it is a polyvinyl chloride which will degrade very very slowly or it will not at all degrade it is a kind of plastic usage in the pipes and all so it will be in the last but you will be confused between food waste and newspaper so which will come first so i will tell you that in newspaper inks are used for advertisement for glossy pages some of the plastic materials are also used in the newspaper sometimes it comes in the special edition so here that will take a bit more time for its degradation but food waste will degrade as soon as it is going under the soil under the earth the microbes will attack and they will degrade so here option a will be correct food waste will be the highest biodegradable material followed by newspaper waste then pvc at the end so here if you can analyze if you can give one or two minutes in one question thinking about that then you will definitely hit the correct option So I hope you have learned something new from here something interesting from here and you have enjoyed the video so don't forget to subscribe the channel to get all further updates and yes at the end I would like to say that yes if you haven't watched this video that how to prepare for the gate environmental science and engineering paper you must watch this video this will be very very helpful for you in the long run so see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself see you guys in our next video